Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, if you were here for Attic Line Friday, I'm sorry. It's not happening today. Um, I was expecting to. I actually have a story picked out. But my oldest showed up from college unexpectedly, and that took up all of my afternoon and all of my time that I would have spent on uh, cards. So now it's like a whirlwind in and out in a couple of hours, as it happens sometimes. So I did have this video that I wanted to put out in the next couple days anyway, so I'm going to do this and then probably Attic Find Friday tomorrow. Seller Find Saturday, I guess. So when I was a kid, I was 12 in 1991, and uh, Jeff Bagwell, I'm just going to show you the card first of all. So it's a Bagwell PSA 9 with an autograph 10. Jeff Bagwell was traded by my Red Sox to the Astros for Danny Darwin. Danny, <laughs> why, why, I think it was Danny Darwin, right? Why am I losing my mind all of a sudden? Larry Anderson. I don't know, my, my memory just suddenly dropped. Larry Anderson, I think, anyway. As I edit this, I had to laugh. It's obviously Larry Anderson. And so I wondered, why did I get Danny Darwin in my head? And I went to Danny Darwin on Baseball Reference, and he was with the Houston Astros in 1990 and then signed with the Red Sox as a free agent. So really, really similar timing from Astros to Red Sox, just like Larry Anderson, which is why I got them mixed up. Anyway, back to the story. This reliever had had a great first part of the 1990 season, and the Red Sox traded... Jeff Bagwell for him to help secure the division title in 1990. It didn't really work out for the Red Sox. I mean, they won the division. I don't remember if they would have without him. So, yeah, Jeff Bagwell went on to become a pretty okay player, went to the Hall of Fame. But in 1991, Stadium Club came out, and it was... It was mega popular. In 1989, Upper Deck came out, and those cards were a dollar a pack. A dollar a pack in 89. That was crazy. It was way more than Topps packs were, Don Russ packs. But in 1991, Series 1 packs of Stadium Club shot up to 5 to $8. 5 to $8 a pack in 91. Series two packs were, I want to say three to five dollars. They didn't have as many stars, but they had Jeff Bagwell. And I would mow a lawn and I'd get like 12 bucks, 12 to 20 dollars for mowing a lawn in my neighborhood. And then I'd ride my bike, I don't know, three miles or so to the Tontine Mall in Brunswick on Main Street in Brunswick, Maine, and go into Wiggy's card shop. And I would ask how much he was charging for stadium club packs because and I, I wasn't very smart, obviously, because I could buy the Bagwell as a single for however much it was, like 15 bucks, or I could buy a bunch of packs and hope to pull it. And I never pulled it. I was, uh, I loved opening packs because, you know, you got a chance to get all kinds of other players. So, you know, you're paying 3 to $5 a pack for, for Series 2, hoping to pull a Bagwell. I really don't remember how much the Bagwell went for. If you remember, let me know how much it was selling for in 1991 when those Series 2 packs came out. I don't even remember if Wiggy had the Bagwell as a single. I just remember I, I bought packs. And, well, first of all, I'd stop at, I'd stop at Rusty's Corner Shop, or actually... Mishu's Market was another one where I'd stop and I would get penny candy. So uh, I would count out back then. You would literally reach your hand into the Sour Patch Kids or the Swedish Fish and count them out into a paper bag and say, I've got 100 Swedish Fish and 100 Sour Patch Kids, and they charge you two bucks for 200 of them. And so I'd load up this bag with stuff at Mishu's Market on Main Street in Topsom, and then I'd ride across the bridge into Brunswick to Wiggy's at the Tontine Mall and 
going to Wiggy's, which was a really nice, clean, well-lit store. And Wiggy was kind of this weird, uh, I don't know how to describe him, just a weird dude. But he treated us young guys really nicely. And um, I wanted that bag well so bad, and I never got it. It was, I remember when I first got back into collecting and I looked through my collection, I was like, did I, did I have this Bagwell? I, I rem- the Bagwell was so clear, so vivid in my mind that I looked through my entire collection. It was not in my childhood collection. And so I Googled it, and the, the image on it brought back so many memories. It was just like this flood of memories. It nailed me. So uh, I've been trying to, I've been thinking about buying one and then mailing it off to get uh, a private signing for Bagwell. But the card itself is a couple bucks. Bagwell, $70 to sign at a private signing. And then you, gotta, you get it slabbed by PSA. And I do the, double, the dual grading, which is 25 bucks in a bulk order, I think. And then there's no guarantee. And again, I don't care about the, the grade. It could be a PSA 4 like my Larkin I showed the other day. But if I can get the, the card, the autograph, and the slab all in a 9-10 grade for less than you'd pay. I paid $69 for this. Less than just the autograph grade. And you know, when you're mailing off a card to a private signing or TTM, it's not going to be in great condition. It's just, you got to put it in the envelope or I put it into, whoa, I put it into photo corners on one of these things. And then I've got to pry the photo corners off. It, it's just, it's a risk. And you know, that's a risk I take. But in this case, 69 bucks cheaper than just the price of the, the private signing. So great deal. Um, I'm really happy with this. It is, uh, it, we've talked a lot about grails on Twitter in the last few days. And Danny and I are going to be doing a, a hobby think tank video next week on grails too. This was like my childhood grail, unsigned. And I've got it signed and slabbed. And of course, in 1991, PSA was formed in 91. It was, I had never heard of PSA until I got back into the hobby in 2003 for the first my first time back in. Um, yeah, so I guess my childhood grail, probably, which now is like a $1 card. <laughs> so that's really it for today. It's been a crazy week, and there's no less love for the hobby for me or for putting out fun videos, what I think are fun videos. Uh, it's just that I'm super busy. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a great weekend.